Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thanks for coming. My pleasure. Uh, we've got an exciting project in the works. All of you have heard about this. All of you are participating in one way or another. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about how the five days is going to work online. We're going to have lead up announcements over the next few weeks on Facebook, on Twitter, on the website. Announcements and links throughout the five day event. Some, uh, some summaries on Facebook. We don't want to uh, overload Facebook. Twitter, on the other hand, is something that's well suited to a bunch of announcements. Um, Twitter is a little bit better for stream of consciousness, lots and lots of updates, which is why we live tweeted when Jason was in the NACUFS cooking competition a few months ago, and then talked about it on, uh, on Facebook, but not quite as many updates. We'll have links to the blog posts. We'll have some samples of the photos that people are posting. Um, we're also going to talk about this on Foursquare because one thing that we can do is use Foursquare to make announcements. It's not really a social media outlet in the same way that Facebook and Twitter are, but when people check into our units, we can show them a message. And the message can be, hey, did you know about this thing that's going on? Go check out the five days blog. And the blog feed will also be on the main dining.cornell.edu page. Uh, Keith Kubarik, who's our web developer, actually just this afternoon finished the tool that will let us show that on the dining site. Each participant should be planning on posting at least a couple of updates, at a minimum a couple of updates. If you post every day, even better. That would be great because each of us has committed to doing this for five days. Chances are we're going to have something to say every day. Um, the blog posts don't have to be books, they don't have to be magazine articles, they don't have to be long, insightful. They can be insightful, but they shouldn't be long, is, uh, is what I'm getting at. I would suggest a few sentences to a few paragraphs. That's probably a reasonable length to give people who are reading the blog an opportunity to digest what we're talking about. And it's probably good to save something for the next blog post. These should be about your experiences. These should be about what you're seeing, what you're experiencing, what you're eating. When you visit the blog, log in with your NetID and password, and you have an option to decide how your name is going to appear. You can have it be, you can have it appear on the blog as your NetID, as just your first name, a, a variety of options, and you get to decide how it looks. Um, so it I'm, doesn't matter what we have now, though. Right. Um, I'm using my full name because that's what I do, and uh, that's what my blog posts will look like. There is a five days account that is posting the general updates. So if you go look now, there's an introductory blurb that uh, one of Michelle's crew wrote for us, and that's there now as an initial blog post. But, I'm sorry, where exactly is it? blogs.cornell.edu okay. slash five days, and I'll send out a link to everyone. Um, you also should have gotten an email to let you know that an account had been created for you we should have on the blog already. service. Mm -hmm. Yes, just before the email that I sent out last week saying, hey, you got this, you got this email from CIT, but don't actually do anything. Okay. And I'll also be sending out a, uh, a collection of this information so that everyone has it in front of them. So real quick, Mark, mm -hmm. you said there's going to be our individual um, blog account, but then there's a, a, just a general five days feed. There's a five days account, account that is going to be posting the general updates. And that's at the same place? Yes. Okay. So everything that you post on the five days blog appears on the five days blog as you. Each person is posting their own thoughts as themselves. The five days account is posting the more general updates, the here's what's going to happen um, updates on the blog. So since I'm a participant, I wanted to make sure that 
my posts of my experiences about what I was eating were going to be separate from the this is how this works, this is what's going on posts. Do you suggest us putting a picture? Uh, an avatar of yourself, yeah. a profile picture, you can. Um, I think that will only show up if you post comments. Um, you're welcome to do that. It's, uh, it's entirely up to you. I, that's why I was asking if it would show up or not. I, I think it only shows up if you, uh, if you have comments and it will show up next to your comments. I'm not sure. We can probably configure that so we probably have the choice. Okay. So if you want to put a picture of yourself on there, go ahead. I don't see why not. Mm -hmm. When you're thinking about what you're going to post, let me know or let Michelle know if you want help doing it. And the same is true for the staff that you're working with who are going to be participating. If they don't have time to sit down at a computer, they can just jot down a few thoughts. I can turn some bullet points into a couple of paragraphs for them. They can send me a text message, they can send me an email, however they want to do it. So I can, I can craft the blog post for them if they want to participate, but they're not going to be sitting down at the computer. And what we're hoping folks will post is reactions to the restrictions. I know that I'm going to be eating gluten-free for five days. One of my reactions is going to be, wow, Mardi Gras is tough without gluten. <laughs> or being a vegan. vegan. Every, everything, is, everything is tough without gluten. Everything is tough if you're suddenly vegan. And I, I think the, uh, the expectations that we have going into this are going to be a little different from our reactions as we go along. Um, I know I follow a lot, of, uh, a lot of food blogs, and I am often reading about what people do to create gluten-free meals, but I'm still expecting some surprises. And <coughs> pardon me, I'm going to be thinking as we go along, how does this affect me? What's different from what I expected? I think that's something that's going to be interesting. How is this different from what we thought we were going to be getting ourselves into? What are the foods that we're finding? What does fit? So what are you finding on campus that fits your diet? I think it might be interesting also to talk about food off campus and cooking off campus for ourselves, but the real focus here is Cornell Dining. So what are we finding on campus? What are we finding in the Cornell Dining eateries that fit the diets that we're using. We're going to be asking staff members, and I've already started asking. When we're in an eatery, we're going to say, please help me figure out what's gluten-free. Please help me figure out what's vegan, whatever the case may be. Is there dairy in that? This looks gluten-free, but does it have wheat flour to thicken the gravy? Those are all things that, that we're going to need to think about in, in varying degrees and in different ways. Get some food photos. Take some pictures. If you've got a cell phone that takes good pictures, take some pictures of what you're eating. Please don't post photos that don't belong to us. Don't post clip art that we don't have the right to use. We are publishing this, and of course, we're trying to draw attention to it. So this is always true, but even more so than usual, we can't publish things we don't own. We can't use images that don't belong to us. So if you're if you do a Google image search for something that reflects what you've just eaten, chances are really good, even though you found that image on the internet, we don't have the right to use it. So if you're not sure, if you didn't take the picture, assume that we don't have the right to use the image, and let me know if you need help finding something that we do have the right to use. It happens that I've been eating Cornell Dining meals for many years, and I actually have photos of a huge number of dishes that Cornell Dining serves. So if you eat something in one of our eateries, I might already have a photo of it. So just let me know. Um, when you're thinking about your food photos, plan ahead. Try to get a good picture. Um, what's, what's wrong with this one? What what seems unsuitable about the picture on the left there? It's too dark. You can't tell what it is. 
At least it's, I can't. It's a little muddy, and part of that is the projector, but it's mm -hmm. also a little bit muddy. Contrast is way off. Yeah. The contrast is off. The colors aren't really good. Looking at the person's belly, belly in the background. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Who is that? One of the so things. Fine. One of the things to consider is: Are you taking the photo horizontally? The reason I ask that, and, and almost anyone, when they whip out their phone to take a picture, if they hold the phone this way, they're going to get the wrong thing. The reason for that is our eyes are horizontal. We don't have one eye here and one eye here. We have our eyes horizontally. So we see wider than tall. And that's, that's just a perception thing, but it means that when we're taking the photos, almost always the right way to take the photo is horizontally. So try to think of that when you're capturing the image. Um, think about what's in the background. The flash is on. Who knows what happened with this? I think partly it's that the flash is on. Don't use the flash. And partly it's, I, I don't even know what that is, and I'm pretty sure I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> it's just not appetizing. Like grapes and onion. How about these? What's, what's wrong with the picture on the left? It's fuzzy, it's not in focus, it's blurry, it's bad lighting. <laughs> and it's hard to tell what it is. You certainly can't tell what the one on the right is either. Um, Martha, did she really do that? Yes, like all, of these, all of these photos are by Martha Stewart. Oh, Every single Martha. one of them? Every single one of those photos was Martha, tweeted by Martha Stewart. And she got a lot of guff online sure. for the food photos that she was tweeting. And oh, she... Uh, it's, she, she doesn't see the difference. She doesn't see the problem. She said, well, what's wrong with them? There's, there's nothing wrong with these. This is what I'm eating and I want to share it with people. Well, so Martha Stewart is great at many things. It turns out this isn't one of them and that's okay. But I'm going to give Inside you some training, tips pretty good, though. that will allow you to do better than Martha Stewart at food photography. So that's a Passover meal. This is actually a, a Passover oh, yeah, there you go. Uh, like Masa Ball soup to the left. It's, yeah, it's yeah. Persian. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't remember what that one was, but this is, is Persian food, and I, I love the idea of Persian food. I've had some great Persian food, but that's just not appetizing. Part of it is the, uh, it's a jumble of food, it's a pile, it's a pile. Go well, fire yeah, out. Yeah, and part of it is the, uh, part of it is the flash. So, post-consumer. No flash. If you don't know how to turn off the flash on your camera or on your cell phone, Ask me, I will help you. <laughs> Turn off the flash. Almost always, photos should be taken without the flash that you've got on your camera or your cell phone. And there are exceptions to that. Um, there are situations where you need a flash. There are situations where flash is perfectly appropriate. This is generally not going to be one of them. So I discovered on my little point and shoot that there's a food setting. Um, and it works pretty darn well. It's very, it's got a very true good. color. Blend. Good. That's perfect. If you find a setting that you're happy with, yeah. that's good. And get in close. Mm -hmm. um, you don't want the belly of the person sitting across from you. You probably don't want the silverware, the napkins, the salt and pepper shakers, the whatever else. And those can be cropped out after you take the picture, and that's fine. But generally speaking, you want to get in close. This is a picture of um, Cornell Dining Sushi. Sushi with gusto sushi. You're starting to sweat? <laughs> it's really cool. I'm getting worried. Thank you. Thank you. We're under it was, stress. We're under stress. stress. It, was, it was delicious. Stressed What's out. What's wrong? That's a lot of pressure. Yeah. On the right picture. But you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> you can do it. I can't handle it. Is it's the plate so clean? Stress. What's in the background? So the, the background of the image is, is something to think about. Um, I think one of the... What is up at the time? One of, one of the pictures that I had from Martha Stewart, and I guess not one of the ones that I used, the edge of the plate was really spattered. There, was, uh, there were droplets of sauce everywhere. Um, when I took photos when Chow opened on Trapammer Road, one of my chef friends looked at one of the pictures and said, that's embarrassing. I would never let that out of my kitchen because it, it had schmutz on the edge of the plate. <laughs> Schmutz. And the, the expediter should have caught that before it left the, the kitchen. Don't let schmutz go on your plate. No. Brandon's crew is really good at that. No, they do yeah. wipe. I've seen them wipe. Yeah. Um, so if you're taking a picture, if you've already gotten some sauce splattered on things, 
clean it up a little. Something that looks tidy is going to be more appetizing and it's going to be better at illustrating what we're doing. Um, this is uh, another of the Cornell dining dishes. That's one of the salads at the Big Red Barn. So Mark, I'll just let you know you're about seven minutes. Just okay, to give you a thank time. you. Um, Hold still. Yeah, holding still, not having that blurry photo is one of the one of the biggest things. And if you're if you're holding the camera, especially if it's a heavy camera and you're not used to it, that can be hard. So brace your elbows on something, brace your elbows on the table, or make sure you've got good light. That helps enormously. The, uh, the blurry photos tend to be the ones that we're taking in low light because the camera has to hold the shutter open longer or record for longer to get the image with enough light. And as a result, we end up with, uh, with blurry photos. So make sure you've got good light, sit by a window, sit under a lamp. A room like this is well lit, so this would be a good place to take food photos. Um, just think when you're sitting down about where the light source is. Sunlight is great, um, but as we discovered when we did some shots in 104 West a few weeks ago, the sun streaming in the window is too strong. So we actually sat near where the sunny spots were instead of actually um, taking the photos in the sunlight. Um, an action shot. Here's a, a crew member over at Trillium serving up some of the Mediterranean food that we had there last year. And that's actually a, uh, a valuable shot to have. If you're at one of the eateries and there's um, and there's That's got a lot of background if you look at the bottom yep. of it. It's, uh, it's not a great food photo, but it's an action shot. Yep. So in, in this case, yeah, this is actually, I think, the reflection on the, uh, on the sneeze guard. And there's lots of other things going on. This is, is sitting here, one of the little sauce cups is sitting out and is, is clutter. So if we were doing a photo shoot for promotional purposes, we would worry more about things like that. Um, don't worry, he said. Don't worry. Don't worry. It's, a yeah. it's only a blog. Don't, don't yeah, worry really. too much. I mean, yeah, <laughs> don't go too crazy. Do try to get something that, that you look at that you think here. looks appetizing. And <laughs> if you're not sure, feel free to ask me, does this look good? <laughs> um, but generally speaking, I'm not going to worry that much about it either. I'm going to be so trying to... So you don't want to switch uh, to kosher for a week with me and Paul there? Or what? Um, no, thank you. Um, I've, I've, done, I've done kosher. I'm, I'm Jewish, so I've, uh, I've done the kosher diet for, uh, for brief stretches. When I was a little kid, actually, my, my family kept kosher. I don't really have clear memories of that. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah. I'm not giving up my bacon cheeseburgers. I'm just going to be eating without a bun for five days. Okay. Any questions? If you think of anything later, feel free to email yeah, me. Yeah, I do have some questions. Okay. Um, so let's say this plate doesn't look like this, but it's a plate I want to capture. Mm -hmm. So I now know to turn my camera, my phone around. I think that's fabulous. I did not know that. But what I want to be up over? Do I want to be at an angle? What kind of um, how do, what relationship do I want to create with this thing? I almost always do an angle, like uh, this? an angle, so not quite overhead. Yeah, something like that. It not depends like, on what I'm not, taking a picture of. Not like this. If you're if you're taking a picture of a plate full of several kinds of food, and you're trying to capture the overall meal, then there's some advantage to shooting from overhead. Um, but that would be that would be something like a, a big Thanksgiving dinner where you're trying to get a lot of uh, a lot of individual items at the same time. Um, if you're taking a picture of a sandwich, it's sometimes valuable to shoot directly from the side. So you're getting a cross section of the sandwich and see everything that's in the sandwich. For almost everything, you want to be at, at about a, a 30 to 45 degree okay. angle looking down and from the side. Any more questions? Feel free to practice. Um, Get some shots over the next couple of weeks. Think about what you're going to be taking pictures of. And as you're eating over the next couple of weeks, I think it's going to be valuable, as, as I've been doing, think whether what you're about to eat fits the dietary restriction that you're going to be following. 
think how you would talk about it if you were writing a blog post about what you're eating and think how you would take a picture of what you're eating over the next couple of weeks just for practice purposes. So how are people going to know about this five day? I mean, we are going to be talking about it loudly. There are press releases being prepared to go to local media. Um, we're going to be talking about it on our social media outlets and on the dining website. So I think as we do this, people in the community and on campus are going to be seeing it and sharing it. They're going to be retweeting, they're going to be sharing on Facebook. Um, for those of you who are on Facebook, if you're not already, please like Cornell Dining. If you're on Twitter, please follow Cornell Dining. And by all means, as you see things that interest you, click retweet, click like, click share. That's how, um, that's how Facebook decides what to show people. It's the, uh, the content that people interact with is the content that Facebook will show. The reason I say that is that for any given post on Facebook, Facebook only shows it to a handful of people who might see it. So if I like Cornell Dining, Facebook will show me a fraction of the things that Cornell Dining posts. Oh. If I have a friend on Facebook, Facebook will show me a fraction of what that person says on Facebook. And the more people interact with the post, with the photo, with the link, whatever the case may be, the more Facebook will decide to show it to other people who might see it. So if you're scrolling along and you see something that appeals to you, click that like button. Because that's how Facebook decides to show it to other people. Anybody have any questions for Mark? I think we need a social media tutorial next I was time. just going to say, you're really holding, <laughs> certainly holding my team's hands. Please. We can certainly do that. And I'm sure we haven't covered all of the details. If you do have any more questions, by all means, email me or stop by. Thanks, everyone. Thank I'm so looking forward to this. I think it's going to be really fun. Me too.